Hello everyone, welcome to this short tips and tricks kind of video for a rocket. Now I'm going in this assuming that a lot of you have already played this game and know the basics of in and out of rocketry. This is just tips, right? Just little tips that maybe you didn't come across during your building uh, adventures. So the first tip that I can show you is how to separate your boosters without using separatrons. Sure, separatrons look cool and they, you know, in real life there are separatrons and all sorts of good stuff. But in KSP, like for instance, if you're in career mode, you may not have this option. So another way of doing this is actually to put a part and clip it slightly inside the main rocket. So put a part inside the booster that's clips slightly inside the main rocket make sure that this part has a high impact tolerance now don't cram it all the way in there or else when you separate the whole thing is going going to explode just put it in there enough to where when they separate and become two different crafts that it naturally tries to push this part out of the actual main rocket the best way to describe this system would be a, like a mechanical separatron in comparison to a chemical one another tip is that all rockets kind of have their sweet spot when it comes to a gravity turn well what is a gravity turn it's when gravity literally grabs their uh, the rocket it during launch and starts to pull it down towards the planet as it's trying to go up so it naturally turns using gravity this saves a lot of fuel because you're not wasting a whole bunch of fuel trying to use the WASD keys kind of like this and trying to keep that sucker lined up this may require a few launches in order to find out that sweet spot but a lot of times I go for the actual meters per second before I actually start my gravity turn so I'll start like at maybe 60 meters per second or 50 meters per second for a small rocket it. And once I get up to that speed, I'll actually point the nose down to 90 degrees. And once the angle of attack actually reaches 90 degrees to my nose, I'll click on prograde and then gravity will do all the rest. So let's test that out real quick. Full power and launch. Coming up on 20, 32, 40, 50. Okay, I'm going to put my nose down to about 90 degrees. And then I'm going to click prograde because they lined up real good. And notice that the entire rocket now, without any input from me, is slow slowly starting to turn towards a 90 degree angle well not, not 90 degree, bleh, 45 degree angle all by itself until finally it's gonna level out and go into orbit now 50 degrees 50 uh, bleh, uh, 50 meters per second good gosh may actually have been too late for this light craft this is how you can tell if you did it right this 45 degrees right here on this nav ball when you reach that 45 degrees you should be close but not right on the middle part of this atmospheric reader thingamajig whatever and as you can see i'm still not even at 45 and it's already way past it which tells me i need to go back and launch at a lower speed or not launch at a lower speed start my gravity turn at a lower speed so let's try it again this time we're going to go for 40 meters per second and see what happens. 30 and 40, okay. Turning down, going down to 90 degrees. Click on prograde. All right, notice I'm at 45 degree angle now, and we're just about to get to the middle of this atmospheric indicator right here. I don't know the proper term, damn it, but you know what I'm talking about. So that's pretty good. That's that that's a pretty good. Now we're about to run out of boost power, so you're going to see what these uh, structural panels can do. All I gotta do is hit spacebar and and it pops them off real nicely. Altimeter, that's what it's called. Wait, oh no, I'm so damn tired, I can't see straight. Of course, if your rocket tends to flip all the damn time when you're trying to turn down, turn to a 90 degree angle in order to do your gravity turn, it's always a good idea to put a little winglet on the bottom. You don't even have to have a winglet that has any control. Just makes, just put something wingy bit, something that creates, creates drag or some sort of control. Hell, it could just be this and then you're done. I know that looks funky as hell, but that works. There's enough drag right here that I can actually pull the ass and down down while the heavy top end goes up. Of course, you already knew that, right? But Veos, what about big giant rockets like this? Can that technique still work? The answer is yes. The only difference is you may have to grab these things and shove them in there just a little, just a little bit more. Not a whole lot, just a little bit more. So that it has enough force to push the empty giant booster away. Now, of course, if it explodes when you separate them, well, then go back in to your hangar bay, and grab these and pull them out a little bit so it's not so forceful when it, when when it pushes itself away from the main rocket. Now, so for some of you who don't really are too familiar with how to build a rocket and fly it and everything else there are a few things that I can throw at you real quick before this tips and tricks video is over with. So 
So what you saw there was that I went ahead and made three boosters, copied it by holding down the Alt key and clicking on the hydraulic detachment manifold, and then making a copy of that by holding down the Alt key, like I said, and putting it on another three symmetry so that I could have sort of two sets of boosters in a, in a, uh, in a way. Now, why am I doing this like this? Well, if you're not familiar with this, this is called asparagus staging. Basically, smaller boosters drop off, then the secondary boosters drop off, then you have the primary boosters. Asparagus staging works by putting fuel from the first set of boosters into the second set of boosters so they always remain fueled. And then, once these drop off because they run out of fuel, the second set of boosters start to put their fuel into the main tank or the main rocket, allowing the main rocket to still stay fully fueled during the flight as it's draining, as the fuel is draining from this booster. So by the time that the second stage or the second set of boosters drop off, this entire rocket in the middle middle stays fully fueled the entire time even with its engine on. All you need to do is grab an external fuel duct, make sure you got three symmetry on or how many ever symmetries you need in order to go from one set of boosters to the other. This allows the fuel to be pumped from the first stage boosters into the second stage boosters and then you take the same external field duct by holding down alt and clicking on the part and put it into the rocket. Make sure that you have the three-way symmetry is on if you're using, of course, a three-way symmetry booster for your second stage. Depending on how many boosters, you might have four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure they're all there. Okay, all of them are there. Now, if you you may notice that in when I click on the part, I have a option here called auto strut. This can be turned on through settings. Make sure you go through settings and click on advanced tweakables. Auto strut is good, but it's not everything so sometimes you do need to use regular struts for more complex builds but this is not a video for complex builds this is simple tips and tricks we'll go ahead and grab our structural panel again if you have the DLC you can probably use something more smaller like one of these structural panels uh, I forget which DLC this is from but for me DLC is stock it's not a mod it's part of the game so it is stock you have to you have to buy it and download it which kind of sucks if, if you don't have the moolahs at this point in time but definitely save up for it or you know request it for a birthday present i don't know remember to check your staging so that the ones that the boosters that run out of fuel first are staged ready in order to come uh in order to separate first another thing i could probably tell you is that for smaller rockets like this it's okay to stage the decouplers along with the engines so that when you hit spacebar the decouplers decouple and the engines ignite and it all goes in one shot but when you're talking about larger spacecraft or larger rockets, a lot of times when you activate the engines, it can give the whole thing a jolt because all that the parts that are down here that are suddenly moving forward with thrust into a large heavy rocket, it kind of makes it bounce around a little bit or jolts around no matter how many auto struts you've got on and how many struts you've put on there, it can make it bounce around a little bit, which can mess around with the flight path it makes it janky so for a larger rocket it's always good to ignite the engines first and then once it kind of stops wiggling then you can go to the next stage which is of course to decouple these stability enhancers for larger rockets like really really big ones sometimes you'll see me with a fuel tank attached to the stability enhancers and then that fuel tank will have a fuel line going into the rocket so that while it's burning and using fuel and trying to stabilize on the launch pad before I let it go it's not gonna it's still gonna have a full tank by the time I release it but for smaller rockets eh, it's fine not a whole lot of weight going on here all right if you notice these tanks are already draining they're about to go and these are still full and boom they're done separate that okay now these are going but the main tank is still full all right here it goes and separate and here you are Fully fueled tank going into orbit. So it's very fuel efficient, this asparagus staging technique. But Veos, I put wings on the bottom of my rocket, and when I launch it, it still flips out because the center of mass is so high up and it just keeps on flipping out. What do I do? Well, other than putting fins on the bottom, using the gravity turn system and not using a manual WASD keys in order to get up there, but actually using the gravity system, the gravity turn system, there is another trick up my sleeve that I could show you. This trick was actually used many times in an old series that I had called Solar Nations. Now in KSP, 
the nose cones are actually calculated as some sort of kind of stability assist part, like wings or control surfaces. They kind of dig into the atmosphere, allowing more control when a rocket goes through the atmosphere. But sometimes just having a giant nose cone on top of a larger booster isn't enough. So what I'll actually do is I'll grab a nose cone, in this case an advanced nose cone, that can attach to the side. I'll then grab a aerodynamic nose cone, which is lightweight, and put it underneath. This makes this part have virtually almost no drag. However, it will grab a hold of the atmosphere while in flight. Now you can use just one if you want to, sort of clip it in a little bit. This is how I did it for Solar Nations. I do want to be able to see it because I don't like the fact that it's completely clipped in. So I do want to be able to see it and be like, oh look, there's another part right here. That's kind of interesting. Or we can do this, get a little bit of symmetry in there, kind of like this, and then duplicate that however many times you want. And now you have a nose cone with extra little nose cones to improve its aerodynamic grip in a sense best way to describe it. I'm sure there's a scientific big long way of, oh crap, I'm actually, that's uh, <laughs> I'll just bring that down a little bit. There we go. I'm sure there's a big scientific name for it, what it's called or whatever, but um, this is just real simple video. I'm not trying to get a freaking master's degree, doctorate stuff in rocketry. All right, so these fuel tanks are a little bit of exaggeration, but I just wanted to show you this technique of keeping the craft fueled while the engines are on. Now you can hit space bar and just gradually use shift key to bring up the power on the rockets. It's using the fuel in here, so it's keeping this nice and steady. Now this isn't big enough to actually wobble or anything, so you really don't have to worry about it. Like I said, it's a small rocket. Small rockets are pretty easy. You just go ahead and click and boom. But this is what I mean by hooking up a larger, huge, giant rocket with its own fuel source on the launch pad so that it can get itself right before hitting spacebar and releasing it. Now one more tip before I go is that if you're really having problems trying to find that sweet spot for the the rocket and it's driving you crazy you can control it through thrust so like I said before you're looking for that sweet spot of 45 degree angle and your altitude being close to wherever this is in the middle in order for that nice little arc of a gravity turn but if you're not achieving that and you don't know what's going on and you, you try it over and over again different speeds during takeoff or launch then you can use throttle in order to control your arc or your flight pattern so right now we're at full throttle but I'm going a little too high too fast and my nose isn't pointed down like I like it so I'm going to throttle down this does waste a little bit of fuel, but in the long run, it's a hell of a lot more efficient than using your manual ASWD keys in order to press the rocket down, kind of sort of force it down, right? Oh wait, I ran out of fuel, hold on, let me do this. There we go. Right click on this and it will keep the numbers there for you. Time to apoapsis is 31 seconds and it's actually slowing down, so I'm gonna throttle down again and bring myself closer to it. All right, I'm gonna throttle up some more. Apparently I have a lot of TWR, so I have to be careful. You don't want the T- minus to increase, you want it to decrease. The closer you are to your apoapsis while burning fuel, the more bang you get for your buck. So I'm throttling down now because my apoapsis is running away from me. Let's check the other side real quick. And of course it's 68, which is basically I'm going into orbit. So there you have it. Just real simple, basic tips and tricks on rocketry or building your rocket. I hope, this, uh, hope you learned something from this. If not, I hope you had a good time watching it anyway, but I gotta get out of here, so take care, and I'll see everybody in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye